Hi, it's Linda Lee, and I'm working on a journal. I've got a lot of the work done on it already, um, but I want to uh, sew in the signature, and I figured uh, that is a piece of uh, the whole process that a lot of people have questions on. So I'm going to show you at least how I do it. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's a struggle. You guys are going to see which one it is for me on this one. Uh, the, the journal itself that I'm working on, it's a single signature and it's actually an altered um, file folder. So what I did is I cut it in half and so this is like the front half, this is the back half, and I've got some papers in between. So it kind of divides it up a little bit. And then I have one of those 12 by 12 pieces of paper that I just, I've been kind of working on making an envelope type page like this. Uh, it's a little wonky here only because I haven't figured it out entirely, at least on this one. I have since, but anyway, I kind of liked this color with um, the pinks, so I'm going to use it. But anyway, you can kind of see it's a naked journal, at least so far. I haven't got a lot of decoration on the individual pages so that the person who receives this can really just do a lot of writing. Um, I've got an organza bag that is glued in. I'm not sure how well it's gonna stay glued. Uh, what I did is I used Elmer's glue and rubbed it all in. And then what I did is this is wax paper over like cardstock and I put this in so that it wouldn't go all the way through the organza. So hopefully it'll stay stuck. I don't know. If not, then it's just a loose bag in the journal. <laughs> so anyway, I've got a couple of little random cards that I started to kind of work on uh, that I need to finish and uh, pockets on the cardstock. I haven't really done anything with the back. You can kind of see um, the tabs. These are uneven and the little tab, I got all my strings kind of hanging out. I don't think I'm gonna trim those. This here is one of my melted flowers that I make and then as well as this. This little guy here is a piece of uh, ruffle lace. This here, well, actually it's this right here. And what I did is I, I actually just tore this piece off here that's making it a ruffle. And then I counted five of these little um, crescents or bumps. And then I stitched the middle and tied it together and I have like a five petal flower that I sewed onto this doily that I'm using as a closure. So when I sew uh, the signature together, I'm just gonna sew it so this is actually um, sewn right to the book itself. These are the different colors of wax thread that I have. So I don't know for sure which one I'm gonna use. I thought for the longest while I was gonna use the darkest one, but I think I kinda like this muted palette. This is too bright, so I'm not gonna use that for sure. And I think this is too bright too, at least for this journal. So this one is the one and usually I kind of measure like three times roughly when I get my thread together and um, I use a fairly good sized needle if you can see it it's got a really big eye and which makes it really easy to thread but first kind of need to poke some holes in this. Now when I do my signature, I usually don't have my cover 
done and I don't have as much stuff like glued in and everything um, but things just kind of are a little out of order with this particular project so I am going to show you how I kind of line my stuff up so this here this in the middle in the back is going to be the middle part I want to put it right through that hole so I use these straight pins to kind of um, poke my holes because I don't have an all and my hands I have a little bit of arthritis this right here it gives me the ability to kind of push through pretty easily and I'm just kind of lining it up and so this is where it is so I'm just pre poking holes is all I'm really doing and then doing the same kind of above and below now I want to stitch it through this envelope So I'm going to poke my hole here and the other one, I'm going to poke it through here. All right, so, so you can kind of see where I'm going to end up threading. my little journal or my signature. So hopefully I make it through the middle when I do it with the threads. This is a little vintage doily that I actually found in an antique store. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to Hold this right here and do the same for the back just to hold it a little snug so I don't have this extra piece flopping around while I'm trying to sew this puppy together so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this needle and we're gonna start it on the outside through here. Then I'm gonna come up through the middle and out on this side. And then we're gonna put both threads in here and go back in through the middle hole where I'm gonna actually tie it off. So let me show you what that really all means. So I've got my pre-poked hole here just kind of wiggling it around to make it bigger because if you can see the needle is wider than that pin so while I'm holding it tight this here is where the hole is so I'm going to go in that hole And then you just want to be careful not to pull it all the way through. I'm going to use another one of my little bulldog clips. And just clip it to here. And then we're going to go over to this hole. Now some people use an awl. I don't have one. I've never found one that I liked or that seemed small enough. And then so now I'm just using that pre-poked hole and I'm threading my needle through it. 
and I made it through the doily like I wanted to. Cool. Is that where I want to be or do I want to be up here? I'm going to do it there. Okay. So now, this is a Betty Calkins trick. She was the first one that I saw do this. And ever since I saw her do it, I've pretty much done it myself. So now I'm going to thread this needle with the other end. And we're going to poke both of these through at the same time. So when you do that, you're not potentially going through a hole that already has a thread going through it and splitting the thread. And I'm gonna go through the pre-poked hole, if I can find it. Uh-oh. And sometimes you have to do it one at a time because <laughs> your holes don't stay lined up. But at least it was pre-poked and easy enough to see. So I'm just gonna grab some flat pliers to help me pull it through that middle now that it's got the two threads. And we're gonna snug it up. And then one string comes on one side of the piece going through the middle and one is on the other side. And I'm just gonna tie it in a knot, make sure that it's tight on the outside. And then I'm gonna tie it in a knot again. Okay. So I'm gonna leave them long for now, only because I don't know for sure what I'm gonna do with them. If I'm gonna, you know, tie something onto them, you know, charms or what I'm gonna do. But now my journal is a book. Let's get this on the other side. There. And now I can finish some decorating. And then this here, I'm just going to thread through this little hole to be the closure. Hopefully when Lauren gets this, she doesn't mind threading that. And now, I'm just gonna tie a little bow. And it ends up being a double little bow because I have two strings in the front and two strings in the back. Isn't that cute? So now I just have to figure out how much more I'm gonna do with the decorating and embellish my pages a little more. Also too, I wanna make um, some folded little pieces of paper to go along with you know, my little cards that I put together. I wanna try and keep them pretty low profile, meaning not very bulky, so that they'll all fit inside really nice um, because I don't want it to have too much girth because what I'm also gonna do 
is make an envelope out of a napkin. So this here, let me grab these, is a napkin. So it's just a regular napkin, you know, that you would see at a dining room table. And what I'm going to do, though, is, as you kind of saw when I first put it in frame, is fold it into an envelope because I'm going to put this little journal in it. So in order to fold a napkin into what looks like an envelope, you basically fold it in half. Now, I want it to be a little deeper so I don't have my points fully lined up. Okay, let me kind of get this out from underneath so you can see. Okay. Now this piece I'm gonna fold down, which is gonna create a pocket. And then I'm folding the two sides so that it becomes an envelope. So this will fold down. Now I haven't decided if I'm gonna stitch this whole thing, but I am gonna use a piece of crocheted lace on the flap. So I'm gonna probably sew this or use my Fabri-Tac Fabri-Tac should probably work pretty good for this. Or maybe I'll at least um, tack it and then sew it. And then kind of pleat it right here. And then bring it up the other side. Just so it's a little fancy. And then maybe I'll embellish it more. I don't know for sure. And then I might... I don't know what I, how I'm going to secure the whole thing, but I do know I'm going to put that flap on there. And then this will fit inside. Probably like this. So it's deep enough this way, and it should be wide enough this way too. Okay, so that's my plan. Um, I'm going to just do a little bit of work without some chatter, and then we'll do a flip through at the very end and some slides. So here we go. And this is um, from a bigger piece of lace. I have a bigger piece that has little daisies on it and I kind of cut out the daisies so they're more like little applique's and I think I'm going to glue some here and there just to decorate it up a little bit. Now, I use this purple that turns clear numbers blue a lot on fabrics and lace. I've actually never really had any difficulties with it. It usually holds pretty good. But if I have any areas, you know, that seem to lift up or not going to stick, I'll go back with the Fabri-Tac.